New UCLA quarterback Chase Griffin looks pretty good. Have you ever heard the name Wally Pip? If not, I'm going to tell you coming up right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro quarterback and quarterbacks coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. Today, we're going to talk about UCLA's new redshirt freshman quarterback, Chase Griffin. He's been filling in for Dorian Thompson-Robinson, who was disqualified out because of COVID. Now, I mentioned in the tease about Wally Pip. And if you don't know the story, Wally Pip is the player that Lou Gehrig replaced for the New York Yankees. I think that might be going on at UCLA right now. If it's not a controversy, at least it's a thought in Chip Kelly's mind. First, let me say I'm not advocating for anybody to lose their job due to injury or illness. I have never and will never advocate for that. However, as a college head coach, your job is about wins and losses. Keeping your job is about wins. And Chip Kelly has to be considering that when he thinks about Chase Griffin because Griffin has been very efficient at the position. So that's got to be going through his mind. I'm going to break down film. We're going to take a look at his game. I'm going to show you what I like and why I think that there's something brewing down at UCLA. But first, if you haven't done so yet, if you're new to the channel, if you love X's and O's, football content, talking about the Pac-12, talking about college football, make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell. Get notified every time we have new content coming out. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to talk about UCLA's new quarterback and Chase Griffin. And leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you, your thoughts on the situation, your thoughts on college football, anything X's and O's. Happy to answer them if I can. Finally, please share this video out. At Elite Athletes TV, we're trying to help as many young athletes as we can with instruction, information, teaching, training. And the more you share this video out, the more young athletes we can help. Now, let's get to UCLA and the quarterback situation. Chase Griffin's only played in two games so far. He was under-recruited because he's smaller. He's 5'11", so he's under that 6-foot mark that you like to see for quarterbacks. But he's been playing the position at a high level for a long time. Coached a lot, had a personal quarterback coach when he was in high school, and you can see it. You can see the polish in his game. He is a good decision maker. He throws the ball very well. He has excellent technique. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in the game against Oregon right now. Let's take a look at the film. So this is his first start versus University of Oregon. And obviously, Autzen is much tougher when the fans are in there. But again, his first start against the presumed best team in the North, and that's Oregon. So a very good squad. Supposed to have a great defense. Defense hasn't quite lived up to that this year. But his route combination is going to be a corner route by his tight end, a sit by his H, and a swing by Dimitri Felton, his back. And on the backside, they're going to run a climb route and a snag. Everything being equal, he can stay front side and work the spacing out here, going for the two-on-one on the corner in this position. And so as a quarterback, you want to get back there, read it, deliver an accurate ball, and get your completion. Does a nice job getting back, finding his key. He sees his guy. Corner starts to widen. Backer is starting to get some width and depth. And over the top, they've gotten over the top safety. And so as a quarterback, you see that. You stick your foot in the ground, hits a little hitch, and puts it on his H. Simple play. First throw. I like the concept. I like the play for the quarterback. Just let him get back there. Rip it. Accurate guy, accurate to an open guy. Next play. Now they're going to come back and go to the right, work the wide field. And what you're going to get is short motion here. This player is going to run a cross off the motion. Your flex tight end is going to run a pick route on the outside. And you have Phillips on the inside who is going to run the corner route. So essentially... You're going to get the same read as you had in the last play because you're going to get Felton out of the backfield. This is designed to be a pick, and you'll see when the H gets out there, he actually puts his hands on that linebacker to try to keep him from getting to the flat. Here, Phillips comes off his route a little bit too early. Oregon is just playing straight zone across, and so you're going to see these guys drop out, backers drop out, play zone, but when they do, that leaves Felton in the flat. Easy throw, wide open. His nerves are a little hot here, and so he comes off this, 
and ends up coming back to the backside on the shallow cross. Now he should stay front side because as everybody drops out, Felton is wide open in that flat. But he decides to come backside to this crosser. Now, he, when he does that, he resets his feet and throws a very accurate ball because this linebacker ends up actually jumping this cross as it comes across. And so he has a real tight window to stick this into. And I like his footwork, I like his mechanics, and I like how clean he is coming back. Now that said, let's watch as this motion comes across. You can see right now, backer is picked. You're okay there. And getting depth on the outside. This is green grass. If he just sticks his foot in the ground, delivers that ball accurately to his running back, you've got space, you've got a great athlete in space, an opportunity to get something big out of it. Now, he doesn't like all of this in here. It's kind of bunched up. And so immediately he comes off of this. As his crosser comes across the field, you're going to see this backer jump it, but he resets his feet and gets to a good throwing angle and throws an accurate ball back here to the backside. So resets, doesn't like that look. For some reason, he hung here and didn't hit that. That should have been a high-low. This should be where the ball went. But you see him get his feet reset. Let's go through that real quick. Watch him swivel his hips, gets his feet reset, gets that nice tee on the back foot, and he's planting and throwing to where his receiver is going to be. Good ball, away from coverage. He should have made that front side read, but because he came backside to Phillips, he had to throw an accurate ball, and he got it done. Let's watch his feet from behind here. See, defense bumps across. You know it's zone right now. Sends his motion. And now as he drops, he's looking front side. He's, he wants, he's hanging on that tight end. But the tight end's tied up. That's why you have that back as flare control in that flat so you can get him the ball. Decides no, comes back, and watch him reset his feet. Decides he's not staying front side. He's got a shell across, one hitch, resets it, and gets that back foot teed off to throw perfectly on the line to his guy. Now he sees that backer, and he knows he's got to make an accurate throw. And he puts that in the spot where only his receiver can catch it. So now you can see UCLA comes out in the same formation as that first play I showed you. You're going to get the same exact route that we saw in that first play. Corner. Sit, swing. Only this time, Oregon is bringing pressure. They're going to bring Mike into the A. They're going to bring Will into the A. And what that does is it gives you four-man weak, so four weak, which is tough to block up. UCLA is going to do a nice job of staying home on the backside, sliding to it. You're going to see their left guard come over and help out on the four, which leaves their tackle manned up on an island on the backside. But when these guys come, they pick up the four weak as they slide to it, but there's nobody left to pick up that defensive end. So Phillips sees that, and it's a young quarterback learning and recognizing, knowing that he's got that swing, that's going to be as hot. You're going to get corner dropping out, safety playing the hook area, free safety in the middle, corner off in thirds. Drops, he sees that pressure off the edge, knows he's got an escape route with a hot route, and gets it out to Felton and gives him a chance. So what Oregon is trying to do here, and you can see it from the end zone better, is they're trying to bring four weak. Four weak is really the nemesis of all pass protections. But you're going to get Mike, linebacker, into A. You're going to get the backside backer into A as well, which gives you two guys. Then here's number three, here's number four. Now, center does a very nice job, and the right guard does a very nice job of coming back to try to help out. What that means is this tackle is all alone by himself out here to take this over. And so when he does that, 
you're going to get a free rusher off the outside. So when Griffin sees this, he knows he's got to be hot right now and throws that swing. There you can see four weak. One, two, three, four. Guard doing a good job of coming back to try to help on four, which leaves that tackle on an island with that defensive tackle. And here your end is coming free. Nobody get him. And so Phillips recognizes that, gets his hot to the outside, makes an accurate throw, and doesn't panic. Let's it go and gives his guy a chance. So now you're going to get a corner with a shallow. And then we've seen them work out of this bunch package down here a bunch. You're going to get, instead of get corner, which we have seen, you're going to get a post route through, a seam, and then a flat wheel by your back out of the backfield. This is designed to fool coverage, and Oregon blows a coverage here. Even if they're in zone, somebody has to have that deep third. If we look at the last play when they brought pressure, they got the deep third with the corner over the top and then had somebody else play in that hook. Well, here, you're going to see the corner influence with this crossing route. They're going to let the H run scot-free up that seam, and then you're going to get somebody widening here with the back as he runs that flattened wheel. This comes wide open. This is a fantastic job by a young quarterback recognizing a blown coverage and then just delivering an absolute strike on this ball. I'll run through it once, let you see it. You can't leave that uncovered over the top like that. Now, this safety looks like he's trying to work back to this side, but look at Phillip's eyes. He is looking right at that safety, holding him in the dead center. As you get this post, it's going to influence the safety as well. As you get this release, this corner over the top runs with that. This backer or flat defender ends up influencing with the flat. It leaves this wide open. And Griffin recognizes it. Right there, you can see his eyes as that safety stays in the middle. He hitches, and look at the anticipation. This hasn't fully cleared out yet, but he knows he has nobody back here. Flat defender is sitting down low. This safety or corner has his hips turned, and he starts to influence here. He knows he's got that throw. This is great recognition. And again, just an outstanding throw by a young quarterback for the touchdown. Now, was everything perfect? No, everything was not perfect. I'm going to show you a couple plays where he can improve, but he's young, just a redshirt freshman, and his first start, and so he is making the right reads. He actually started off this game 10 for 10, so incredibly efficient at the position. That's one thing that UCLA hasn't been with Dorian Thompson-Robinson. They haven't been efficient at that quarterback position, and so he gives them a chance by getting the ball out on time, getting the ball to the guys that need to be there, and, sit, and staying firm in the pocket to deliver that ball. Let's take a look at a couple of his miscues, and then we'll finish up. So now UCLA's using a little bit of tempo. And what you're going to get is a shallow, and I'm going to tell you something about that in just a second, which is pretty funny, a corner, a shallow, and I want you to watch as these guys cross each other, they actually high-five each other, which I think is pretty funny. I think that's probably a coaching point, saying get close enough that you can high-five each other and that way you get that natural pick. And then you're going to get a dig over the top. And you're going to get a flat by the running back out of the back. Now, we just saw him hit that big seam route beforehand going towards the same end zone. He's going to miss his read here. This corner comes down and plays low on this crosser coming across, which leaves that corner route coming out completely uncovered. What happens is you start to get just a little bit of push, a little bit of pressure from that front side, and I think it takes him off his read, and he rolls to his right. He needs to stay on that read, 
and key that corner. When this guy comes down low to take that crosser, this is wide open. That's another touchdown if he sees it. You can see that come out the top right there. He's got to see this guy flat, body language telling you he's coming down low as you've got a route coming over the top. Now, that's a crosser, flat route, cross coming back over to that side. This one is a touchdown right here if you make that read. Again, he's getting pushed. These guys are getting close and flattening out that dish for him. But if he hitches right now, just like he did in that last throw, you can see that this guy is beat already by this route climbing on him. And so that's where he needs to go with the football. First, watch this mesh as these guys come across and give each other high fives. That's pretty funny. Look at him reaching out for the high five right there. High five as they come across. Just don't see that very often, so I thought it was funny. I thought I'd point that out. But... Griffin is still front side, but as this pressure gets in his lap, watch him come off that read. He hitches once. He should have it right there. If he lets that ball go, it's a touchdown. Instead, now he feels that pressure, and he's coming back to the back side, where he's now got this shallow with a dig, so he's limited on what he's got back side. He escapes, tries to make something happen, and eventually just throws that ball away, which for a young quarterback is a good choice if you don't have something. But he did miss that big throw over the top, had the free touchdown. And you can see his receiver over here. He's like, hey, what about me? I'm wide open. But that's how you learn. I'm sure he watched this on film and went, oh, that was an opportunity. So UCLA is going to send motion. And they're going to end up working the right side because they have numbers. You're going to end up with one, two receivers on one, two DBs. If you try to work the backside, again, this is not man, it's zone. So Oregon stays home. You're going to have one backer to your side, two in terms of a DB, three against one, two guys here. So he works the right side, which is a good choice for him. And his receivers kind of screw him on this. You're going to watch as his receiver, who comes across in motion, he's going to run the out route. And he kind of slips coming out of this break. At the same time, his outside receiver lets himself get rerouted and jammed up right in the lane of his throw. And so this looks really muddy for him because of the slip. But even more so, because this receiver doesn't clear out of the way, he can't throw it into a receiver and DB having a hand battle out here. So what he does is he comes back to the back side where he's got a tight end on a climb route. But... The backer turns and runs with him in that climb route. Safety gets over the top. And so it's a really tight window in here to throw this football. He tries to throw it right over the top of the backer and ends up throwing it high, and the safety gets the pick. This is forcing the football down the field. I get that he doesn't like this. He's got time. He doesn't have pressure right in his lap. And what he could do is run with this ball, do something else, throw it away, but don't force it into coverage. Oftentimes as young quarterbacks, we make snap decisions. And in this case, he's making a snap decision. You see this route right here is running into this receiver being blocked. He's got somebody over the top. So he already came off of that route. Run it back just a second here. He's looking front side. He wants to throw front side. He wants to throw this route right now. You can see the way he steps at it, but this gets him off of it. He steps, he wants to throw it, but it's not there. So very heady, very smart, being efficient, he turns back and is looking for this route, but this backer has looked that up and the safety is flowing over the top. There's a nice job staying poised in the pocket. Look, he's got somebody coming right behind him. He's got pressure here, dish shallowing up on him, but he's still really poised in the pocket. And I don't mind the timing of the throw at all. You just can't try to force it into this tight window with the safety over the top. If you're going to throw this ball, 
You want to bring him across that backer, throw him open. Don't try to throw it right over the top of a guy underneath. And again, snap decision, so tough to do. But you see, overthrows the tight end, and the safety's there to make the interception. It's a costly turnover. He had two interceptions this game, one of which wasn't really his fault. It was right before half trying to throw a Hail Mary. But we'll take a look at this from the end zone, and you'll see what he's seeing. So you bring motion. Reset. You see that you've got numbers to the right. You can see right there that step. He wants to throw that out route. But that corner on the outside jamming that receiver, rerouting him, took him off of that route. So what does he do? He resets his feet. I like the fact that his feet and his head come back to the middle at the same time. And this looks pretty good. Linebacker is there, but you have a tight end running vertically with a linebacker that it's going to have to change position. As a quarterback, what you have to think about is not trying to force this ball in there. Be aware of that safety and throw him open. Look at all this green grass over here. Instead, he throws it high over the top, and look how tough. that I mean, that's a tough throw to try to put that ball over the top on that backer. That is a tough throw to make. So he still almost makes it. But you're playing with fire right there. If you lead your tight end away from that safety and away from that backer, now you give yourself a real chance. Throw that ball more to the right. Let your tight end run to it. Keep it away from the safety. So Chase Griffin was by no means perfect. I showed you some of the good and some of the bad. There was some really good stuff in this game. He's got good escapability. He can run. He's mobile. And so he's got a really high upside, I think. That's his first start as a Bruin. I think he can be really good at that position. So there has to be some controversy down there. And I know Dorian Thompson-Robinson is probably feeling pressure. I've been in that spot where – you're out because of an injury or you're out because of illness and the guy ahead of you is playing well. So I don't know how it plays out, but UCLA has a good young quarterback in Chase Griffin. He plays the position well. He's incredibly efficient. I think he's operating the way that Chip Kelly wants him to operate. Now, I don't think they've opened up the offense. They went back to the well in the same place several times, but he looks really good as a young quarterback for UCLA. And so there is pressure down there on Dorian Thompson Robinson. If you like what I did here today, Make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. That way you get notified every time I have new content coming out. Give me a thumbs up if you like the young quarterback at UCLA. Give me a comment if you don't. Tell me what you think about what's going on with the quarterback position at UCLA or anywhere else in college football for that matter. And remember, share this video out. We're trying to help young athletes, showing them how you should read, showing them what you should look at as a quarterback can help them out. So more you share this out, more young athletes we can help. I appreciate you watching today. A little bit of quarterback breakdown, quarterback film, a little bit of training in there as well, and trying to help you understand X's and O's, improve your knowledge of the game, improve your football skills, your football IQ, hopefully make you a better player. Talk to you again soon.